Our first question is from a 74 year old and he had a biopsy. His biopsy results came back that he had three plus three and three plus four and both were less than 5%. His PSA has gone up from 68 to 71 and now to 82. And because of the high PSA, he's kind of wondering, he would like to do active surveillance, but there is three plus four present. So high PSA, three plus four, he would like to know if active surveillance is an option. Well, PSA levels in this range uh, really raise the question of the possibility of cancer being outside the prostate. And uh, the biopsies that you imparted are not usually consistent with things spreading outside the prostate. So you've got a con uh, controversy or a conflict between uh, the information about the biopsy and the information from the PSA. So that needs to be resolved. There's some different ways to do it. In the old days, we didn't have much choice except we would, we would re-biopsy and see if there's some higher grade material that was missed on the initial biopsy, which quite possibly is the case in, in this individual. Uh, now we have PSMA PET scans. And so uh, when I run into people who are running higher PSAs than what I would expect, and this is a lot higher than what I would expect, uh, I obtain a PSMA PET scan, and of course, if it confirms that all the, the cancer is still inside the prostate, and, uh, and he's highly motivated to watch it, and he, um, uh, he is 74, so it would be very aggressive to do active surveillance at someone with PSAs in this range. And I don't think I've seen anyone with a PSA this high who had organ-confined disease. It's theoretically possible, but it really uh, bespeaks of someone who has early, uh, not even early, just metastatic disease. So we need to check that out. So when we see these high PSA ranges, I know another person asked, can you have, you know, a Gleason 3 plus 4, have a high PSA, would pro like BPH or prostatitis be a factor in any of those? Or is that the PSA range is too far out for those to be factors? Right. Yeah. yeah. People that have really big prostates, and some men have prostates that are like 10 times above average, uh, those people may run PSAs as high as 20, 25, 30. But when we see P PSAs over 50, I mean, you can see it transiently in people that have uh, uh, severe prostatitis, bad inflammation and infections. Uh, you can see PSAs run up to even 100. But it's a transient phenomenon. And then the PSA, after the inflammation dies down, the PSA gets back down to reasonable range of less than 20. Until proven otherwise, this man, uh, you know, doesn't, talk about any urinary symptoms. Um, he had several PSA tests that were over 50. Uh, it seems much more likely to be a cancer problem. And although the Gleason score is very favorable, it looks like they, they missed a higher grade cancer when they did the biopsy. So we have a patient who has BPH and has confirmed three plus three. Their PSA is about 11. Um, they have, they're about 67 years old, and they've been on Avodart and Flomax for quite some time. The urologist is not concerned that the PSA is around 11, and they want to stay on active surveillance, but they're a little concerned about that number. How do you feel about them continuing? Well, PSA is not a great standalone measure for deciding if you need to be or don't need to be on active surveillance. The, uh, the biopsy findings and the imaging findings uh, are 10 to 20 times more accurate than PSA. We don't know how big a gland this is. Uh, if he has a really large, say a 200 cc gland, you could have a PSA of 11 on uh, Avidart or ProScar and it would still uh, be in the normal range. Um, if this is a small prostate with a PSA of 11 on Avidart, uh, then we're looking to explain why is the PSA so high with what we think is a low-grade process, 3 plus 3 or small amounts of 3 plus 4. So once again, we need to uh, consider looking further, uh, making sure that there's uh, not some misbehaving cancer that's been missed on, uh, on previous evaluations. And uh, if a th thorough vetting has occurred and there isn't evidence of problems, it is reasonable to watch people uh, who have higher PSAs because men can have nonspecific prostatitis fairly common situation, ongoing inflammation in the prostate of oftentimes uncertain etiology. But PSA is running high due to unexplained inflammatory conditions in the prostate, we call it prostatitis, is a um, fairly frequent phenomenon. And uh, it can confuse people and it sometimes drives people into treating their low-grade cancers probably when they don't need treatment, sadly. Bottom line then is not to use just the PSA to decide who should or shouldn't do active surveillance, but to rely on other more accurate measures such as uh, MRIs, ultrasounds, PSMA PET scans, uh, targeted biopsies, and these sorts of things. 
Thanks so much for watching. If you would like more information about prostate cancer and all sorts of education, you can visit our website, pcri.org, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new prostate cancer education videos every week.